everybody, welcome to the GGB podcast number 14. These guys are acting like crazy animals. Uh, I am Dallas, and today we have Greg, or What's at up, everybody? Born Mayhem on Twitter. Go ahead and send all your dick pics to that guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we got uh, Justin, or at Random Hero XIX. And Howdy. Uh, my name is Random Hero, and I am addicted to GGB. <laughs> oh, look at this hair. Forget we're on a video podcast. Let me, let me oh, fix that. Uh, uh, got it. Oh, my cup matches the background. It does. It does match. So, that, didn't you? after, that well done. after yeah. last week's test, we prettied it up. So, we got a little prettyage here. Um... It's adorable. It, it's it's a something. I'll tell you that. If you are watching this, go make sure you're on the GGB Twitch, which is uh, geekgrabbag. Oh shit! It's just geekgrabbag. Uh, <laughs> because last week, I guess with the hosting functions on Twitch, we had people watching on our uh, personal channels, and they could not chat with us. So today, maybe they can chat with us. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not a genius. Now now someone's got some stream going on. We got some Greg. (laughs) You're gonna get that you're gonna get that chat popped out. That's what I was doing. So good thing we're good thing we're moderators. Somebody (laughs) say something so I can time one of you two out. (laughs) What the fuck have you guys been up to this week? And don't say work. Make something up. Either one, you go. Just go ahead. I was I... Uh, I was perusing through the avenues of time, uh, and I beat Dark Souls three. Also, there was work. Uh... I'm gonna stop you. What ending did you get? <laughs> normal, just the normal, the regular one. I didn't do anything special. I didn't marry the chick or whatever, but just the plain Jane. I sat down by the fire and chilled. That was one of the worst fucking endings to a game, in my opinion. It was weird. I actually went ahead after I finished and I looked up the other two endings just to see what they were I like. did, too. <laughs> I, they were way more interesting than that. <laughs> than just, nah, we got this fire now. I think I'll just sit here and hang out. Yeah, the other ones actually just made you think. This The other one, well, that one was just like, well, I guess I'm basically that guy now. Exactly. I'm just hanging out by the fire. Uh... Greg, what about you? I actually worked. You uh, son of a bitch. Uh, no. Uh, as usual. Always. I feel like I'm going to say this forever. Like the Binding of Isaac. Still haven't finished it. Um, <laughs> the, still? Well, you have to beat each ending with each character. And some of the characters start with no health or like health that goes away. It's ridiculous. But that's either here nor there. I also played Destiny. Uh... I slowly get in and out of it. I'm feeling like I'm probably going to go back to it for a little bit. Because the new stuff makes it a little bit better, especially with the upgrading system. We just lost all your volume. No! Greg's? He he went out on me. He was like, hey, we got some upgrading system. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. I can can hear you. Oh, okay. (laughs) <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, the upgrade system's a lot better. It's easier to use. Um, I have a beef to pick with you, and do not leave your fucking games on pause. I check that shit, and I'm silver in a lot of the achievements on fucking Quantum Break because of you, Greg. Dallas, you're so mad, and I'm staring at you right now. If you check your achievements, at the top of it, it's got all of the, like, top threes of certain parts of the game. Like, time played, the uh, percentage of the game beat, like, all that stuff. And for time played, I did fucking everything in that game. Except for very, I missed, like, maybe five or six uh, collectibles I had to go back and get. And my play time was somewhere around 16 hours. So I'm like, oh yeah, and Greg's is at three days and, like, 15 hours. And he's got five percent of the collectibles. This is bullshit. I do. I do want to say one thing. I, I have seen the achievements side by side, but until you showed me that picture, I had never seen like how long the people have played before ever. Yeah, like that I. Time break, I've never seen that before ever. I uh, 
I'm an achievement whore. So, and I also like to be better than all of you guys and everyone else on the planet. So, I like to check myself against you guys. I, there's only one other person that I know that probably has a higher score than you. I, I believe it because I don't even have technically. Edge Nelson. <laughs> The lifespan. Uh, I would assume, probably. I don't know him, though. Yeah. I was talking about uh, my boy Max Burke. He has, like, I think going on 250,000, something yeah. like that. I don't know. It's huge. It's on, let's just go with, I've been a Xbox Live member on for 10 years. I've never changed my gamer tag. Well, I've changed it, but it's been the same account. Uh, and I only have, like, 102,000, I think, after this week. And that's low compared to some of the people that have had the same account for 10 years. It's ridiculous. And I play a fuck ton of games. It's just I don't have time to sit there and 100% every game. If I no, like the game, I will. Neither do I. And I've had my account for 10 years yep. as well. And I'm only at like 32,000. <laughs> I think Keith is somewhere around 32. Uh, out of all of my friends, I believe, I've got like 70. I think I'm the highest because I won't let anybody else that's higher than me be my friend. Fuck them. <laughs> I'm going to find out all the games that have, like, the easiest thousand points. I'll tell you the easiest one. Avatar. Go get it. You can, you can yeah, get a thousand know. points. <laughs> well, isn't, it, isn't it like you just have to, like, do this one attack or something like that? Or I don't remember what it was. I remember it's a, combo. a long time ago it was, like, X-Play. I remember seeing that on there. I miss G4. I forgot oh, about G4. Well, I miss G4, but G4 that, like, last year was all fucking reruns. All of it. And, like... They'd still play X-Play, but it was like fucking X-Play, like games that came out like three years ago. I know. I got, whenever I first got Dish, that was back in like 2004 or 2005, and the very first thing I turned on after we got that, because my friend's dad was the one, uh, Dennis Jackson, he did the install for me, and I remember watching G4 at Matt's house. I turned it on, and it was like, here's a bunch of Easter eggs and tips and tricks from uh, Link to the Past, and I was just like, sold automatically. <laughs> Favorite game of all time, and we're already talking about it as soon as I turned to the channel? Yes. Uh, I, like, Olivia Munn. Let's just go with that. Olivia Munn. Yeah. Basically. That was all yeah. I watched that channel for. But there was a few other, but Olivia Sarah Munn. Sarah Underwood. Yes. Now we, can, now we can watch Olivia Munn in the new X-Men movie. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only reason I know who she is. is because oh. Of G4. Speaking of movies, man, I uh, finally watched uh, the newest Fantastic Four the other day. Have you guys seen that? Nope. No. Okay, it's pretty much garbage. If Not you, worth watching. Uh, you, I watched it. I mean, you can watch it. It's is interesting. Doom in school? Doom's in it like maybe like five minutes. Can Can you watch movies on Twitch if it's like the couch thing? I don't know. I mean, I'm gonna read up on that. I didn't know that. if that was like. I didn't know if that was like a thing that you couldn't do. Yeah, I became a Rooster Teeth member this week because I wanted to watch their. Uh, uh, they're doing that couch thing. Basically, they're doing like mystery science, and uh, their first movie was Thanks Killing. So I watched that. I, <laughs> I fucking, love Thanks Killing. I love it too. Greg, Greg what are you doing? <laughs> my cat is really weird right now on my leg. <laughs> my camera's too dark. Couldn't even see the cat. It just looked yeah. like you were angling. I thought we were going for a dick, dick pic. I was going to angle my <laughs> lights, but I forgot to. No dick pics today. Not today. No. That's for episode... Uh, Dallas. We'll wait for the 50th or the 100th or something. Dallas, yeah. what do you? What have you been doing this week? What did I do this week? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Let's, look, let's, let's figure this out together. I uh, went and got my marriage license yesterday. Woo! And uh, we went to buy the wedding bands. So we went there. And I have a major problem with uh, retail in general because I'm a person that firmly believes if you ask, like, I understand part of your job is to ask me, do I need any help? You know, such and such. I'm the person that if I come into your store and you say, hey, do you need any help? I will politely say, no, just looking, or I, I know what I'm looking for, or such, something like that. If you or another employee, and most of the time this is just malls because the employees are nearby each other. If you or another employee ask me one more time if I need help, I will stop, look you in the eye, say, 
You just lost a customer. You should have left me alone, and I will leave the store. I don't care if I needed something in the store. I hate it. So we're in the uh, jewelry store, and she's picking out a ring, and she's very thrifty. She doesn't like to spend money, but uh, I didn't care. I was like, wait, just pick out what you want, you know, whatever. So we went to look for my ring, and I'm picking up, like, I just want a titanium, like a black titanium band, something like that. I pick one up and uh, I'm looking at it. 400 fucking dollars for a titanium ring. And I was it's like, no joke. Uh, no. And then the lady insulted me, but she's like, well, we have some cheaper ones over here. And she picks up one and I shit you not, it was fucking tribal band. And I was like, yeah, before she even got it up, I was like, I'm just gonna stop you there. That thing looks like shit. So I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm not getting a ring. So what I'm, Danny said, I, I won't wear it really hardly anyway. So I'm getting a silicone ring because one, it helps for work. That way I don't, you know, get my finger skin ripped off. So that was what I did yesterday. The rest of the week I played video games. I played uh, The Park, which I was going to talk about later. Uh, I finished that in an hour and a half. Um and was before, it really that fast? Yes. And I did everything. I had all but two achievements. And one of them I just barely missed. And the other one is at the very beginning of the game. How much was it on Steam right now? I don't know about on Steam because it's been out on PC for over a year. But on Xbox, I paid like 11 something. And I think it was on yeah, sale. I think on Steam, it changed up and it was on sale. And I'm pretty sure it was like 11 or 12 bucks. Whenever I first put it in like my wish list, it was 15 but still, at the same time, that's, that's a, a lot of money for something that's only like an hour and a half long experience. And it is Was literally it a narrative. It? It's literally a narrative. If you like stuff like that, I would recommend just watching it on YouTube. It's hmm. Same experience, turn your lights off. Maybe watch a gameplay with no uh, audio no commentary, commentary or something like that. Yeah. Uh, I've been thinking about that lately, maybe... I do my commentary videos, but I'm thinking about playing the, those short games like that again just to post them up like that. <laughs> Greg, are we going on a tour? Yes. <laughs> do, you, do, do you want me to not mention that you're going on a tour because people are going to be able to see it later? Oh, no. no. I, had, I was carrying my beer in my mouth. <laughs> yeah, it was cute. I, uh... It wasn't. I tried to relocate rooms. And my laptop cable got caught in my headphones, and I had my beer in my mouth <laughs> and my phone in my hand, and that just happened just now. So. You uh, look like you, you you look like you practiced that before. Uh, back in the circus days. <laughs> yeah. Back uh, on the what we we're just talking about, I was going to ask you guys, and I completely forgot until we started talking about it. But what do you guys would you feel ripped off for playing a hour and a half long game? That you you enjoyed, but you paid twelve dollars for. Absolutely. I, no. No, I'm on the fence. Yes, I was ticked off because I thought maybe there'd be a little bit of replayability. Like, it it is on a rail. It is not. If you find everything your first playthrough, there's no point because all the same shit again. I can yeah, tell you see, this. That's, that's ridiculous. I mean, I have. I have some gameplay I'll put up while we're talking a, about it. A ton of games that I've picked up for $10 or less that have so much replayability. And I understand it because depending on what it is, if the experience is like genuinely awesome, then yeah, it might be worth it. A lot of people probably worked really hard on it. And at the same time, you know, if there's replayability and there's and the gameplay and everything's really cool and it's oh, legit, it's fibbage. Uh, then, yeah, I mean, that's awesome. But at the same time, like, I pick up Undertale for $10, and that game is very long. Uh, well, that's not you know, it. You, have, uh, you have, like, three different endings that you can go through and do. So there's a ton of replayability, not to mention all the other hidden shit that's in there. And that's $10. Yeah, I think that I can understand why you would be upset, because it was so short. But... I mean, we've wasted twelve dollars on other oh, things yeah. before that didn't last an hour and a half. So if you re only because of what you said, you said if you really enjoyed the game, then oh hell yeah. yeah. And I mean, I played The Binding of Isaac for a billion hours, and it cost ten dollars. Yeah, that's it, what I meant. Like you, you have stuff that, that's that, yeah, you you have stuff that has that high replay of 
replayability and everything, then yeah, it's totally worth it. But if it's something like this, it's a genuine horror experience. Like I said, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people probably worked really hard on this game, but at the same time, you can find all the achievements in one go through and it was an hour and a half long experience. If you weren't even going for the achievements that you're doing, you could probably have bet beat it in an hour. Yeah, I did do a lot of like I searched everything. At one point in the game, uh, towards the end, it turns into very PT-esque where it's the same same rooms over and over. Like you open a door and it just starts over. The rooms are just a little bit different each time. Um I got you. The the thing about it uh, the, you cannot if you if you look for every little piece in the game, you can't miss getting all a thousand achievements except for a hundred points, which are fifty. I can't remember which one it was. In the beginning of the game, well, let me set the game up for you. You start off. You're in an old. Uh, you're standing next to an old station wagon, and your kid's in there, and you're like, "I'll go find your teddy bear." Your kid apparently left his bear in the park. So you, as a horrible mother, say, "Hey, stay in the car. I'll go find your teddy bear." So you go up, and your kid runs off into the park, right? So he runs into the park, and uh, then the guy's like, okay, you can go in and find him, and that's where the whole game starts. You're searching the park for him. But you can be an even worse parent and just leave. If you just walk out of the park and head towards the road, like out of the way, it's you get a, it's like into the mist is the achievement, and uh, basically you just try to leave, and then he's like, oh, wait, I can't leave. My kid's here. So you got to go back. But the thing that got me about this game was... You're in a park, and you're searching for your kid, and there's stories, like, basically coming to you pieces at a time. But, it like, even in the very beginning of it, before you realize she's just a shitty mom, and, like, I think she hates her kid, which I'm still confused on by the end of the game, the, the fact that you're searching for your kid, but these rides come up, and at one point she's like, oh, I never got to ride this. And so she just fucking rides the ride. Like, she's like, I'm gonna ride this roller coaster, even though I should be looking for my kid right now. The it's, hell? Exactly. Like, you start off, you're like, oh, I hope she finds her kid. But by the end of it, you're like, this bitch is nuts. And right, like, So you compared, you compared the ending to PT. And that, that's, that's one little issue that I have with it. True, I know, know PT is, you know, a big budget studio. And this is like an indie title type of a thing. But that should make them want to do even more. So, like, PT was free. Yeah. You know, just downloaded it on PS4. Um, you, you're playing it. And obviously you can go through the whole experience and like finish everything in like 30 or 45 minutes. But there is a lot of other just like hidden little things that you can find to get that perfect ending that you can unlock it that you have to go back and play through again. So you get like a two to three hour experience if you're like really trying to search for absolutely everything in something that is from a bigger, you know, but I mean, at the same time, it's a free game. You get the same exact experience, if not more from a free game that was probably a little better designed than something that I, I would just think that like if it's an indie studio I know they probably poured their heart and soul into this game but at yeah. the same time it's just like you know you, you would want to put that extra effort in there you want people to notice the game you want people to get excited and hyped about it you don't want to just make it like hey here's this thing uh, we'll game sell get it to you for downloads? Uh, it's been out for over a year, so it must have got enough that they were able to get the money to port it to PlayStation. Because that's what I was thinking, yeah. like... On I mean, Steam, I think it has, like, very positive reviews. Yeah. And it's not, like, mixed or From anything From people like that, that paid for it, yes. they bought it. Here's yeah. my thing, my argument... Well, I, I don't know if it's really an argument, but... This game is, like I said, it's been out for a while on PC, and PT was, what, two years ago? Maybe? Maybe less? Yeah, I think it came out. So two, this might have been... 2000, yeah, 2014, I'm pretty sure. This might have been in development around the same time as that. So, like, maybe comparing the end of it to PT, maybe they were both doing the same thing. I, I don't know that, but uh, but you're right with the whole, like, it was free and it's the same kind of experience. There was more to this than PT, and I'll give it that. But yeah. still, it's just a story narrative. Like, this part right here you're watching, you get on a swan ride. This fucking swan ride is so damn long. And all it is is the story of Hansel and Gretel. And then at one point, the squirrel, the like main scary guy in the thing, he shows up and if you stare at him, you get an achievement. He doesn't talk, doesn't do anything, then he just disappears. But this ride huh. right here took forever. So I think they padded a lot of the game with shit like That's, this. 
So I, and I don't want anybody that's like listening to this, you know, thinking that I'm like shitting on indie studios because I mean, like I said last week, I think, or the week before, whatever one it was, the dude that made Undertale made it entirely by himself and put so much content in it. You know, albeit that it was a broken down game, it's like a 16 bit game, but at the same time, he poured his heart and soul into that game and gave it so much depth and so much content. And that's what I was saying. You would think that an indie developer would want to put that extra layer of depth or replayability or something into it to actually give back to the people that probably kickstarted this game. You yeah. know, I, I don't know if it was something like that, but it would, I would imagine it's just like, Oh yeah, here, check out our scary spooky trailer and give us a bunch of money and we'll give you a shitty one and a half hour experience. And then you're done. No <laughs> sequel at all, huh? To this? Yes. Uh, no, not with the ending I got. And I don't want to give it away just in case you guys play it, but and I'm sure with as cheap as it is and as long as it's been out, I bet this shows up on Games for Gold or PS Plus. It, either I was gonna either that I'll pick it up, or if it's something I would pick it up just to get the experience if it's on like the summer Steam sale. Yeah. I, I would pay like a dollar or two dollars for it. Yeah. I don't want to pay fifteen. It sounds like a 10, demo 15 bucks almost. for it. But I, it's I'm kind I mean, of leaning against my own what I said. <laughs> it's 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 a great experience. I just had issues with it, with the way the story played out and how long they padded things. And, like, you, you – I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it. It's just play it if you want, If it, especially if it comes on sale, like you said, on Steam. Pick it up. It's yeah. not bad. It's just if I watch this on YouTube from start to finish, it would be all right. And you were saying, you know, the difference – like, if you were going to compare it to PT, I remember when I first got PT, and I think Greg was on my stream when I was playing it the first time, and – the good I thing watched about, it whenever you were on there the did first you? time. Yeah, yeah the, what, what made that game awesome, especially for streaming, was that when they first put that out, the, all the developers were like, no one's going to figure this shit out. It's going to be weeks and weeks and weeks. And they all figured it out, what, like 12 hours? And like the end of yeah, that. But it was, it's, it's so weird because there's a bunch of shit like that, and I don't yeah, see how people sketchy. can do that. That's like with Dark Souls 3, people figuring out those other alternate endings with this mini storylines and different places that you have to go to to get yep. this item or this item to do these specific things to get a completely alternate ending and they figure that out in a matter of like one to two days yeah it like, just boggles me i remember i was i was playing the pt thing and greg was feeding me shit off the internet to try to beat it and to to finally beat it to get the trailer to pop up was so fucking stupid it was like take four steps forward when you hear a baby laugh stop when you hear a second baby laugh Step backwards. Stuff that you don't even notice. I didn't even yeah, notice it's that just, this Yeah, it seems so archaic. Like, I would think the only way that you would be able to know that is if you're, like, looking at the code or some somebody from yeah. the studio. It's just like, hey, this is what you gotta do, guy. You had to, like, stare at the phone. Yeah, I don't feel like they figured it out. Yeah. Well, like I said, it's no, not a bad game. I remember watching. That's actually because I'd heard about PT, but the first time I seen any gameplay was whenever I was watching your stream. And then I went and watched... I think it was Game Grumps. They put they have a whole. They didn't even finish it and get the true ending. They played it for like thirty two minutes, but they had to stop because Dan is immensely terrified by horror games, and he ended up actually like having to leave the room because he couldn't stand being in the room anymore. <laughs> the uh, speaking of Game Grumps, just on a little side note, like this is probably a, a, a long ago episode or maybe new, but I just saw it recently. They had uh, Claudio Sanchez on there, and I, I watched that. They were playing. Yeah, that's uh, that was that was. Uh, brand new that came out like a week was or, it then a week and a half oh, ago yeah it's pretty new yeah they had him on there and then they had uh that jacob anderson the uh, gray worm ah yeah um, game of thrones he is i he was probably i liked the claudio episode but i i think that he was probably my favorite guest that they've had on so far just because he's he can be as stupid as they are. Exactly. <laughs> and he, he even said, like, they talked about it in another episode of theirs before they did that episode with him, that he told them that he was really excited because when they film and they have big breaks in between the stuff, he just grinds and starts watching Game Grumps because he loves watching <laughs> it so much. He's such a big fan. So for him to be on there, it was basically like the equivalent of them watching Game of Thrones and them having him on there. Okay. It's like a dream come true for both of them. If, if yeah. <laughs> this is not video game related or like even really like nerdy stuff related, but I was, I don't know why it just popped in my head, but, uh, Justin, you had said today in the text messages, you were like, 
fuck it. All I'm gonna do is political content all night, and that's all everybody's gonna get. You know, we laughed about it. Oh, that. That's all I saw on, on uh, the news this morning after yes. we woke up was just like coverage about Trump being the the main Republican candidate, and I was just like, <laughs> from then on out, I went into work and at the restaurant, all the old people were talking about it out front. So I was just like, I'm just gonna talk about it all day too, but I'm not gonna have you know, I'm just gonna say stupid shit about it. <laughs> well what what it made me think of is this week and i completely forgot and i wish i would have got the video to put on the podcast here and show it but did you guys watch the uh i am not I, and i can just say it i'm not really an obama fan but did you watch the video of the obama that obama the white house put out that was uh what he's gonna do after he's like what am i gonna do after i'm president after i'm done being president mm-hmm. you didn't see that Oh God, um, go watch it, dude. I saw I saw him doing the White House correspondence dinner and some he said something about Bernie Sanders because Bernie Sanders was out there and Hillary and he did like a small miniature roast thing to them. Uh, I, I God, I wish I had it right now, but it, he made he made fun of himself. Is it uh Obama reveals his retirement plan? I think so, yes. That was fucking hilarious because like I gotta give it to that guy, he's got a sense of humor. So at one point, I think at one point in the video, he's like, oh, hey, uh, I got, uh, Michelle's got Snapchat. So he starts sending Snapchats out, but doesn't realize that he has like the, the like monster face thing for Snapchat on. And he's talking about like, hey guys, Obamacare is great. Make sure you go sign up for Obamacare. It's one of the best things I ever did or something like that. And it's like, it's really fucking funny. And like, he just keeps fucking up. Like he doesn't know what to do with his life. Doesn't know what he's going to do after. It's really, really funny. And I enjoyed watching it. Uh, but that was just a side thing. I, I started thinking about that. I was like, that was really funny this week. So if you haven't seen it, go watch. What it, what was the title of it, Greg? Uh, Obama Reveals His Retirement Plan. Yes, because it is really funny. <laughs> really, really funny. But uh, let's see. What else we got to talk about? I, I guess I was still talking about what I played this week. I also okay. played some Battleborn. And let me tell you about Battleborn. I don't know how I feel about it yet. I just, I don't because <laughs> i just don't it's okay it's got the humor because obviously it's the same it's gearbox so it's yeah you know it's got the gearbox humor but as a <sighs> i was having server issues so i'd had people drop out of my game and some of the other things were really good about it but honestly i think maybe give me another week and i will give you guys like a better uh for instance of what the game is like because I only played it for maybe an hour or two. But there's 24, 27 main characters. And each character gets leveled up on its own. And you can... And like unlike other MOBAs, when you... like It's just like it. So when you start your game, uh, everybody comes in and then you choose your character. And like on a lot of MOBAs, when you choose your character, if somebody chooses that one, it's locked out and you have to choose a different one. This one will let you like double up, triple up, if you all want to be the same character. Obviously, you might have a harder time, but... The, the level up system, what you're seeing there, is, is pretty neat because you don't have to, it's not really, you get one option or the other. That's it. On each time you level up. You don't have to, like, go through a tree to, like, get it all correct and all that shit. But uh, I'll get some more on that later because I really think I'm going to like it. But I also got a beta code for, what's what's the other one? Uh, Overwatch. I, I have Overwatch, Overwatch beta code, but there's one more, too. There's a, oh, Paragon. I got a Paragon code. I'm going to try that out this week, too. But Overwatch is Blizzard, so I'm thinking that that might be even better. I don't know. That's what uh, Frank up at the studio has been streaming a lot recently. He's been playing that. And he's, yeah, he's, he said he's addicted to it. I'm going to, I'm going to yeah. try it out for sure. Actually, uh, he just, like a few minutes ago, he just posted and said he's about to go live doing it, too. All right, Greg. Since you didn't put any topics up, you don't get to talk the rest of the uh, podcast. Ooh. You gonna do me like that? Ooh. Damn. So you're gonna see. love our fake new trees. <laughs> <laughs> Justin posted. Uh, he wanted to talk about the new fucking shitty Call of Duty trailer. So I'll play the yeah, trailer in the let's background. Sing, let's can we sing the David Bowie rendition that plays at the end of it? Uh, you know, you want to know the out. truth? I watched like oh the end of this trailer. Yeah. Yeah, I watched like maybe 15 seconds of and I was like, it's like a butt oh, rock. It's, Call of Duty. it's like a butt rock version of Space Odyssey. <laughs> I 
I'll tell you, the thing that I noticed about that trailer is that outer space stuff reminded me a lot of Dead Space. Really? Yeah. But like it looks... You know it's not going to be as good as Dead Space. It's no, going to no, be no, fucking Call looked... of Duty. Yeah, it's not even like, like, it's not even like a horror thing either. It's just, it's just a first person. They're still fighting other baddies, but it's just like regular other human people and they're just in like a decrepit space. Yeah, area. it just looked just like Dead Space to me. For some I will reason. give it its one good thing. We do get Modern Warfare remastered, which yeah, is worth that's, that's which is worth the, the sixty five bucks thing. on its own. That's the whole reason why I wanted to bring it up is just because. So, I'm sure everybody knows, you have to do the whole pre order to the game and get all that shit, especially at the first part because you can't play Modern Warfare unless you have Infinite Warfare. Oh, you're shitting you me! Play. No, they're not going to sell it independently. At least not for like. I think they said like. I think it's like four to six months. That's sh- so that way, whenever people they know buy their game. Infinite War- War- Warfare, they can make their money because they know people. There's a bunch of people that are going to want to play this. So, you know, why won't we just slap some pretty little HD graphics on Modern Warfare so we know we can make even more money, but then also force people to buy this game? So, but the cool thing is that I saw because I think to do that and pre-order and get both things, they want like seventy nine bucks. Um, for your pre- for your pre-order, yeah, to get that in Modern Warfare HD, I know like a workaround for that is you can actually get I think it's like for like sixty four or sixty nine it knocks off like an additional ten bucks. Well, it, it makes it basically what it would be for just buying a plain Jane normal game at regular price if you do the thing on Amazon where you can pre-order it and if you pre-order it on Amazon they have like if you're a prime member they can get you like an additional 20% off of something that you pre-order from them. That's true, I forgot all about that. I have still so not done that's, that. That's like a workaround people found so they don't have to pay like the full 79 bucks, but at the same time they they yeah, like you said they know their game. They know they're right. going to make a bunch more money doing this. But if you think about what you just said shitty. is Does that look like Dead Space? A little bit, yeah. But what, what you just said, Justin, about, you know, they, they found their workaround so they don't have to pay the $79. If, just think about it this way. If it was 65 then they'd only be paying, you know, 50 something if it was normal price because you still get your 20% off on Amazon. So yeah. uh, is it Infinity Ward this time? Yes, yes it is. It's uh, Infinity So Ward fuck Infinity Ward for being douches for putting out the game that's how many years old now? It's uh, fuck. Which one? Well, Modern Warfare. Modern Warfare came out in 2006? Yeah, so 2005, 2006, almost, something like that, I think. Almost 10 years? Close it's, to it. It's like 8 or 10 years. Like, come on, guys. Come the fuck on. Seventy nine ninety nine. Fuck your faces, Infinity Award. First off, I don't like your fucking games in the first place. Uh, uh, November 5th, 2007 was when the original came out on 360 and PC and all that. So, I don't I don't know. I'm not a Call of Duty fan anymore. I've given up on the franchise. I would rather play Halo or something like that, which I've been playing a lot more of lately ever since this the the night we were up at the studio. But uh yeah, fuck that. No, and I I to a certain extent I still like Call of Duty. It's a fun first person shooter. I mean, it's just one iteration every single year, one after another after another, and they just keep finding more and more excuses to make more money. They already have like the. Well, it's just like what you're talking buy, about. Last buy week. our buy our DLC. We're gonna have you know like six packs of DLC that you're gonna you know you're gonna want to buy. So you might as well just buy the season pass for an additional forty bucks. But you know, I mean, by the time the fourth one comes out, two more months, we're gonna have that next game out. So you're not gonna be playing that map for very long. It's just uh, like we were talking about last week, though. It's the same thing with sports games. Call of Duty's turned yeah. into sports games. Basically. Call of Duty brought to you by EA Sports. And and it was also... Like, it's in the game. Before we, started, before we started the episode, the uh, the graphics are impressive, but they don't look any better than anything no. else that's out. It's not like they're making any advancements exactly. at this point. Um, I mean, at least with sports games, you have those slight tweaks and stuff like that. This looks exactly like black ops 3 or advanced warfare for that matter that's true or yeah advanced warfare yeah i don't know it's just apparently i didn't save that picture on here either but anyway sorry talking to myself which is bad to do during a live podcast but anyway i i'm just gonna leave it at infinity award and treyarch you both used to fight for my 
shoot enjoyment and which one was going to make me enjoy life more and now I could give two shits less. And yes, if you're going to look for an answer, the answer would have been Infinity Ward. I couldn't stand Treyarch after they made those games. But they did make Black Ops. I didn't like Black Ops. Oh, I loved Black Ops. The story Zombies. alone was... And Zombies like, was fun, but that was like the only thing I enjoyed. I, I just, I don't know. I stuck with the Infinity Ward. I was for a long time. Then Black Ops came out, and then Infinity Ward made uh, Modern Warfare 3, and I was like, fuck it. And then I was a Treyarch guy, and then, was it Treyarch or Infinity Ward that made Ghosts? It was Infinity Ward, wasn't it? Uh, I think that was Infinity Ward. Wasn't Advanced Warfare was a completely different... They used Sledgehammer, Sledgehammer. for that, I think. I think they used Sledgehammer yeah. for Ghosts, too. There you go. They did so the that's multiplayer why those part. Two, that's why those two iterations were poop. Um, uh, and then... Yeah. I, on, on the topic of Modern Warfare and, you know, Call of Duty games, those games have turned into what Halo used to be with the smack talk and the, like, trolling. So I was going to ask you guys, what... And we've, uh, you, if you guys say you never have, I'm going to call you a liar. What was your go-to troll move while playing Call of Duty Halo, you know, back in, like, the early days of 360? What did you do to troll people when you got bored? Uh, Call of Duty 4 and Call of Duty 4, or, or call it Modern Warfare and Modern Warfare 2, we'll just say, uh, there was a lot of camping on my behalf. So I did camp quite a bit, too, whenever it got, like, kind of clutch time. <laughs> Especially on Modern Warfare 2, I had a lot of different special little camp spots that I liked. And I remember one map in particular that whenever we were all playing up at the Game Attic at that point in time, uh, we would have, like, our teams of four, and we all just made an effort. We knew exactly where they were going to spawn, so we just chucked every single one of our grenades and just annihilated their team at the very beginning of that map every single time. Greg, what about you? Uh, Call of Duty wise, it just be. Uh, I never really liked Call of Duty online except the hardcore mode because it was easier to kill. Yeah, we but lost all your audio again. It like went in and out. You did hear it that time, right, Justin? I heard it. It got kind of quiet and roboty for a second. Yeah. <laughs> what about now? You're so better now. Perfect. Uh. But I played the hardcore mode a lot because you didn't uh, have a radar. And it's easy. No, we lost you. Just Jesus. have a silenced pistol and just go to town. Just can't, of course, camp in Call of Duty. Always camp. Halo. <laughs> I believe he said fucking sword. Blah. He went. <laughs> yes, <exactly. laughs> uh, so my. Uh, Keith was going to be on tonight, I think, but he's traveling, and he didn't know if he'd get to his hotel fast enough. But me and him used to, every Sunday night, we'd have, every Sunday we'd have band practice. Every Sunday night, we'd just get together, drink beer, and play games. So our go-to troll was always, uh, back then, if you were in a game, everybody heard your chat. Enemies, everybody heard your chat. So... We used to kill people in, like, whatever weird way we could do. We used to play a lot of sticks and stones, and we would or gun game, and all we would do is stab people. So we'd just run around and stab people because it was really easy, and every time you get stabbed in gun game, you go back down to the next gun. So we would do that, and when people would start complaining that we weren't playing the game, we were just using a knife, um, do you guys remember the... You can look it up on YouTube. It's called The Greatest Cry Ever. And it was from... Yeah, yeah it was from Intervention... And black guy? Uh, yes, the black guy from Intervention, where he's like, ah! yeah. that yeah. guy. We would just play that over and over. We'd do that, and we'd do the Bed Intruder song over and over I and over again. I, I loved that guy's cry, but I loved the other guy that's talking to him's voice too. Whenever he's like getting all teared up, he does the <laughs> I still love you. <laughs> so that I always wanted to know what everybody else like did because everybody trolls at least some point. And then after you forget that you were that guy, and then you just hate all the other. You're like, yeah, motherfucker, I would never do that. And you're like, oh wait, I did a lot. Yeah, and then you play GTA Five, and you're just like, <laughs> fuck these kids. Fuck these kids. So, oh One man. more thing before we take away, go away from Call of Duty for a second. I don't know if this will be like a staple now for like the next couple of games. Like if they're just gonna do HD remasters, like with them. You know what I mean? Like whenever they go over to 
Treyarch again and they do whatever their next iteration is going to be if they'll have like Modern Warfare 2 remastered bundled with it as well but I would really enjoy it if they just went ahead and was like hey here's 1, 2, and 3 in the Ultimate yes. Modern Warfare HD package because I mean I would I would pay six, 60 bucks for that I mean you just go ahead and you know play all three campaigns and all the maps yes it'd be like having the halo the that master chief collection all on except it might work disc. Right I, need that. Watch. I would yeah 60 bucks except it might work better because activision has a lot of money <laughs> well <laughs> here's my thing uh i want to play fucking call of duty 2 again because that was one of the first games i got for 360 when it came out and i played the fuck out of that and the yeah. one one thing i loved about that game is the sniper rifles they didn't have the shake that they do now to make it more difficult you could yeah. literally uh, get headshots every time. And I was so fucking good with sniper rifles on Call of Duty 2. I could run and gun with a sniper rifle. Uh, oh, God. I want to. Now I want to play Call of Duty 2. I think we should all get together and play I Call of Duty 2. I never played any of those Call of Duties. They were good. Yeah, and even, they were really good. Even I'm World at War was decent. Four. Which what? Three or four. Well, four was Modern Warfare. Three was uh, World at War, which was the Vietnam one. So that was, it was four. Yeah, because you had a flamethrower and the shit. With ghost in it, isn't it? Yes, yes. Yeah. And soap. We played Max Tavish. So shit was so yeah. good. Oh, that's the other the thing. No co-op cool. in the new Call of Duty. There is no co-op for the single player. What? Yeah, and they've been doing that for a long time now. I, I haven't. I, haven't, I stopped playing Call of Duty at uh, Black Call Ops of Duty. Yeah, I, <laughs> the Irish version. <laughs> Call of Duty. <laughs> uh, but, man, we just talked about Call of Duty for a long time. For a game I hate, that we talked about it a lot. <laughs> what? I just figured it was something that needed to be talked about anyways. Just, yeah. It's, it's news. It's kind of on everybody's mind, and it's very douchey that they're doing that. Yeah, the, like, 9 to 12-year-old crowd is, like, losing their... They're, like, getting their first nut right now over that game. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh! And then they're like, what's Modern Warfare? You're like... Listen here, little fuck stick. <laughs> I hate that kids. Game, yeah, I was gonna say that game is like nine years old. It's um, crazy. Well, moving on from those fuckers, uh, Game of Thrones this week, guys. Uh, spoilers shall happen. If you do not want to, you should plug your ears. Uh, Spoiler alert! Things I loved about this episode. One Wait, Dallas, real quick. Do you hate it that I do that? It no. doesn't ruin the podcast. No, you. I like to talk over it like it's background music. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm gonna keep doing it while you're talking. <laughs> oh no, just the beginning. <laughs> it's just that's for the uh, Game of Thrones segment. Yeah, exactly. You know what? I'll get you to record us a good little intro for it. We we'll only get to do it ten times a year, but you know, whatever. Hey, that makes uh, a segment. So. Things I was excited about for this week's Game of Thrones. And I'm going to just start off with, thank you, HBO, because you didn't make me wait an entire season to learn some of the things that you, uh, some of that teaser trailer they put out. I got to see a lot of that this episode. Episode two. I got to see yeah. fucking Dinklage himself touch some dragons. Yeah. Come on, AMC. Take a note. No, no shit. But... I was super stoked about that when he's like the only one drinking and they're like kind of giving him shit about drinking. And then when he's like, I'm going to go talk to these dragons. I was like, oh yeah, that's why he was getting drunk. <laughs> well, also he loves drinking, but, uh, he does a lot. I loved that. I loved that. He basically was just like, I think that they're just like, he's a dwarf. He's no threat to me. Like, and he's going to, he let him loose. And I think what's going to end up happening is, they're, those dragons are gonna they're gonna let them out and they're gonna find Daenerys. They're gonna bring her back. Oh, that was pretty cool too about the call. Like he was like, he's like, I'm gonna rape you, and she's like, guess who I am? And he's like, oh my bad. <laughs> Wasn't that this episode or was that episode one? That was last episode. Well, shit. I didn't talk about it last week, so I'm gonna act like it's this episode. Yeah, that's okay. Get both of them in there. <laughs> the. uh Arya stuff was a badass. She's gonna. There, he's finally gonna train her. And I and in the book, funny. I was actually surprised that they started that now. I thought they were gonna make us wait to the middle of the season or something. I thought they were gonna do that with all of the shit that happened in this episode. So many good it, things. 
There you go. We're finally getting to the the Greyjoy Rebellion. Finally, that was that's been in the book. It was in two books, the last two books, I believe. Uh, Balin died in the. Let's see, we're on book five, so book four, and all that stuff started. And basically all that stuff's in the books, so I don't think they're going to pa- bypass what's in the books for those guys this season. But uh, basically, uh, let's see, Yol- Yolan, whatever that fuck. The guy who threw him off the edge. That's his yeah. brother. Um, Urien. Is it Urien? Or is that the yeah, old man? Yeah, it's Urien or Euron, something like that. Yeah, I and think then, it starts with an E, I'm pretty sure. And they didn't really bring it up, but the, the priest, when they are sending... Uh, Balin's body out to see that is actually Balin's brother too he's the eldest brother but he joined the church of the drowned god and he's a priest so he couldn't become uh, king of the iron isles or whatever he is Baron I think he's still king I think they let him keep it, the kinghood but uh also fucking Bronn and his badass shit and Willis fucking Willis best meme of the week I saw was it was a picture of Hodor and it said Hodor, 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 and down below it, it, it was, uh, oh, uh, what's his name? Little, uh, uh, the midget black guy. Midget black guy? Was in the 80s TV show. Willis? Oh. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I know what you're talking Gary about. Gary Coleman, what you talking Gary about? Gary Coleman, yeah, and then it was like, what you talking about, Willis, at the bottom, and I laughed. I had a good laugh. I didn't see that, but that's pretty awesome. Uh, I'm excited. I'm thinking now with these flashbacks, we get to see what happened to Hodor. Like why he's the way he is. I'm guessing yeah, kicked by a horse. I saw a horse, bunch of but... crazy like, theories and stuff that people were trying to throw out there. Well, what what are some of them? I'm curious because I love these fucking theories. I saw Before one. You say the somebody. Theories, okay. I have my own theory. Let's hear your theory, Greg. And it's a simple theory. It goes back to the... To the uh... The, the red god, I forget what, the, the red priest and the red priestess. The lord maybe of light. Maybe he was killed, a, like he died a bunch and they kept bringing him back. And now he's just older. Maybe? But why would they bring him, who would bring him back? There was no lord, they don't, where he lived there, all of them are all about the old gods. They're all about the, the, uh. Might have been some low key shit that nobody knows about. Or maybe the, the leaf people, the green, the people, the chil- green, green children, green I forget their names, though. I know what you're talking about. This theory is very not accurate at all. It's, just... well, it's, it's still, it's a theory. Uh, I, I... You go ahead, Jess. Go ahead. You go ahead, No, you go Dallas. ahead. Dallas. Oh, you go ahead. Go ahead, Dallas. Okay, fine. Ooh, two I on go one. Ahead. We're on the, the same uh, side on the screen, too. I, so I think that something during the rebellion is going to happen... Because, like, when they do the flashback to Robert's Rebellion, something's going to happen with Hodor. Because, if you notice, he used to talk, obviously, and he was at Winterfell. I think something happens to him, and Ned and the rest of the Starks, they're like, he did something great for us, so we're going to give him a spot in our house, and we're going to make sure he's taken care of. Because if you look at the Game of Thrones world, if something happens to somebody, or somebody's, like, disabled or something like that, nobody gives a fuck about him. Especially, like, the bigger houses. Even though the Starks are, like, the nice house and, like, they're always, you know, North always remembers, well, we're justice, we're firm hand, but we're also, we'll shake it too, you know? Um, I think something may have happened in the Rebellion or something with, he's going to see something or something like that, that Hodor is going to represent something he saw. It's going to be some sort of, like, phrase, like, the last thing he saw that, like, fucked him up. And, like, I think... And I think it would be really cool for that character that with Braun traveling through, you know, the past, through the trees and stuff like that, that if he finds out what happened and brings it to light and then Hodor immediately is just like, like cured, I guess. He's like, now I can talk to somebody about this. Like I've been, you know, some shit happened. <laughs> this guy kept raping me saying Hodor over and over again. <laughs> gotcha. But I don't know. That's my theory. But you, what, what were you going to say, Justin? Uh, there was one which I, you saw him in the the scene. I think there's like a little clip whenever it was showing like the whole Tower of Joy like rebellion thing. And uh, I think you see that Hodor is around there. But somebody else's theory was 
since they're going after what's Ned's sister? Le- uh, Liana? Liana, yeah, Liana. Liana, yeah. yeah. Her, uh, since he's like the stable boy and the horse that they tend to, the white horse that she's riding on. Yes. They think, somebody said that they theorized that maybe at one point in time, uh, Willis was a warg as well. Oh. And since he couldn't be close to her at all because the people like was like he's a stable boy you're you're you know a lady so then uh somebody was saying something along the lines of like he would work into the horse so that he could be close to her and that she would pet him and stuff like that and that he maybe he was in like the body of the horse somewhere at the time I like warged into it to be close to her and try and, and help her. Something happened to the horse. And something happens to the horse, and basically, it's like his mind is just simpleton now because he died while he was warging, but he's just that way now. And then somebody else's theory was like, uh, underneath the one that I was reading, there was just like, yeah. And then the total in like to wrap everything up, the name of the horse you'll find out eventually was Hodor, and that's why he only like knows that word and can respond to it. That's a good theory, dude. I like That's that theory. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah it was I'm pretty like, cool. Whoa. How's it going, yeah. Brony? Welcome to the GGB podcast. Uh, we're talking about Game of Thrones right now. So, uh, let's see. Other things that happened this episode. Uh, you know, Jon Snow came back to life and, you know, some other stuff like that. But Jon no. Snow came back to fucking life, guys. Yeah, I know. Remember how HBO was, was just like, hey, Jon Snow is dead. Did you guys know that? Everybody left the room, so nobody knows. He could be like, wake (laughs) up for two seconds and then die again. And then one of them comes back in there, just like peek in the room kind of a thing. Now. And then he's just dead again. All I did was uh, the entire, that last five minutes of that episode, me and Danny were watching it. And I said, hey, uh, this is going to happen. And then I was like, okay, but they're going to walk out and he's going to open his eyes. But first, uh, Ghost is going to wake up. And like, (laughs) the (laughs) Have you ever seen that? Uh... Yeah, because they kept doing that gratuitous shot of Ghost just being like asleep on the. I ground. thought he was and dead was at first. Like, They're gonna have to do that. I thought something at first. I thought because they kept showing Ghost like laying there, like just kind of like not doing much. I thought maybe something was gonna happen and like Ghost was gonna die to let John come back. I heard something that uh, after now that he's awake, somebody was saying that since like they'll explain the stuff about his like whole uh, Targaryen like like background and everything that he's like a part of that like whole legacy that uh somewhere down the line ghost will die and to like symbolize the fact that he's like a targaryen that's whenever he'll like get a dragon i can see that yeah. i also because this we're doing we're seeing all of this right now it hasn't been in books yet we're just seeing it on the show i see it playing out different in the books because yeah. the last book had a warg in the like the first few chapters were about a warg like a, a, a wildling warg who was dying and before he died he basically put his body into a, a wolf outside uh, and then he event that wolf eventually finds uh, Arya's wolf and like tries to fight for it's 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 a weird thing like it's only in the books but uh, I also would see maybe in the books that John as he was dying being stabbed to death he went into ghost and when she brought him back i think he came back from ghost which is also in turn going to stop the whole thing where they say when you bring somebody back you lose they lose a piece of themselves he was basically in there i think he's going to be more violent and feral because of maybe that and that's my theory that maybe in the books there's going to be more to do with the warg thing and uh What's really Jon Snow is going to be Wolverine. <laughs> what's really fucking badass about all this is I want to I want to know do you guys think that Jon Snow will stay with the Night's Watch or he's technically died? So, yeah, so his his watch is over. He doesn't have to stay oath there. Oh, is done. Do yeah. you think he leaves? I think what's going to happen Uh-oh. is he's going to say. I need to think, you know, I've been stabbed. Everybody's betrayed me here. I don't know who I can trust. He's going to, you know, and I think he's going to come to the conclusion. I'm going to stay with the Night's Watch because we have to fight this battle, but we need more people too and all that stuff. And then I think Sansa is going to make it to uh, the wall. And then he's going to be like, 
shit, these people are alive and they're getting fucked up by the Boltons. So I'm fucking going down here, gonna kill Ramsey. Jon Snow is killing Ramsey. I'm calling it now. That's happening, especially oh, yeah. after that's, this that's, week. That's that's like totally like as as soon as everything started happening this week, it's just like slipping one thing after another and i'm just like yeah his his character's starting to like slip into the chaos of things and he's not being smart about shit anymore he's just yeah. just killing to kill killing babies man like game of thrones love killing babies like <laughs> that's why a lot of people stop watching season one they're like they killed babies and i'm like yeah but they kill everybody there's no prejudice here <laughs> like everybody yeah. dies somebody said that that's uh who are the two the two Stark kids, the youngest ones? Abron and Rickon. Yeah, that they're coming back next episode. Or wait, Bron right. like right. Bron's coming that's back to Winterfell? They did yeah. say he will not be here forever. Which in the books they made when you read the books, that guy, the tree guy, the green seer, or I think that's what they call I don't remember, but him, he's actually the tree's grown into his body. Like that he can't move. He is the tree now. Uh, and he basically says, when I die, you take over for me. You have to stay here. But I think they're not doing that with the show. They're like, hey, guess what? You go do your thing, and he's going to go help everybody. And I'm, I'm calling it. He's eventually going to get a dragon. So, At some point in time, they said uh, those two kids were to go to... They were, they were going to take them to... I can't remember the name of the place. Old Town? But, huh? Was it Old Not Town? Old Town. It's, it's a different group, but they were loyal to the Starks. But then uh, that group that's loyal to the Starks. The Cal Starks? Huh? Was it the Cal Starks? I don't know. I think their logo is like, it's like a red background and it's like two chains crossed or something like that. Hmm. I don't remember which one it is. They... Anyway, that, that house is where those two were supposed to be sent to. And at some point in time uh, in the trailer for next episode... Uh, the guy that is one of the main like leaders of that house, like one of like the armament leaders, comes to the place because you see their banner being carried like on horseback, and that guy is inside the place talking to Ramsey, and he says that he brought him a gift. Ah, yeah, maybe. And they're saying that it might be the two Starks. The um, so the that thing way he he has them and he can keep them there and have control and. I guess maybe at some point in time they'll use them as like yeah. bribery or something. I don't e know. Even in the books with uh, Rickon, Rickon, they don't really talk about him that much in the books, but there's a lot more than what's in the show. Rickon goes off with the wilding lady. I can't remember her name, but they make it somewhere and they just stop talking about him. And at one point, uh, Sir Davos is not, the, the storyline he's in now does not happen in the books. He is off uh, when supposedly he's dead in the books, but when uh, uh, King, what is his fucking name? Not Which King? Robert's brother. Stannis. Stannis. When Stannis sends Davos on a mission to get more people to come help him with the war, so he goes to this area and gets like tricked and like put in prison, and they like hang somebody, but it's not him. And the guy comes down, he's like, "Hey, the Freys are here. I can't let them see this. You know, such and such." But we're going to take you to something that'll help the North and they have Rickon. So they're going to give him a, a Stark to come back and just fuck shit up. And, uh, I, dude, I can't, I don't know what's going to happen. And that's what makes this show so fucking good. I just, I can't wait. Sansa's going to be badass this season. Arya's is going to be badass this season. Jon Snow's fucking back. Uh, I hope we get to see more. There's got to be something to do with these wolves, too. And they really haven't hit on it much in the books, but something's going to be with the wolves because there's only one dead, I think, right now in the show, which was Sansa's wolf, right? Uh, No, what's his face? Uh, Rob's wolf's dead, too. Oh, yeah, that's right. They killed right? Rob's wolf, too, yeah. Um, yeah, because they put his head on the, the thing. Yeah, so it's Arya's wolf uh, and Rickon's and Bronze. So, yeah. super... And, and Jon's. Uh... I don't know. I, I just I mean, can't wait I for something. Did I mention the whole Dothraki thing last week at all? About... Did I talk about that? I don't think so. Nope. There's another theory that's out there for that one, and it's probably, like, my favorite in seeing what could potentially happen. Uh, 
she she's probably going to go to that temple. They'll have like a couple of episodes as like filler shit whenever they're talking about her being in the temple. But eventually Jora and Dario will catch up to her. Yeah. Try to do means to like save her by peaceful means. And then eventually things get violent. There's people were like, she'll get cornered and then Drago will come in and he'll save her like he did before. Yeah. But whenever he does this because of the Dothraki's like, thing for like the fire or whatever they'll realize that she's like the person that they need to follow and ah, that she so that all Dothraki? Like the, yeah all Dothraki will follow her and the whole thing that I read it was like it'd be cool if they wrapped it up at the end of the season by having her coming back to Marine and then all of the Dothraki meet her there with their uh, with like uh like ships or you know and stuff like that and then they have like a big huge massive army and they start traveling toward Westeros That'd be cool. That'd be yeah, badass. Yes. Even though I hate her storyline, but like she's got dragons, so that's why I'm like, all right, whatever. Yeah. But, I think the uh, the dogs are going to be able to breathe fire as well. The wolves? Yeah, the dire wolves, yeah. Somebody is the Lord of Light reincarnated. After we've seen everything that those priests can do, somebody is that person. And in the books, they talk about uh, Stannis' sword and like how they don't really touch on it a lot in the book. Like they, they, she does some magic on it to make it glow. But what they say is that sword, the, the Lord of Light's sword, is supposed to be fire. You cannot touch it. You cannot look at it. Somebody, Jon Snow, in my theory, is that person. He's going to be the Lord of Light now that he's back. S somebody's going to lead everybody against. And the way that they've set it up to where the King of the the Whites, uh, what is it, the Knights King or? Winners, Kings, whatever. That guy and Jon Snow doing their face-off shit. Those are the ultimate heads of the armies going towards each other. It's a little dragon just his size. <laughs> <laughs> uh, love Game of Thrones and everybody. We're only two episodes in and we've already got some major shit this season. So I cannot wait I for episode three. And I'm sure we'll talk about that next week. Because we're just going to keep we talking about it. We just almost have to have like a separate show. I know, right? Like a half hour long to talk about this. And uh, about if we don't end up doing something like that, I say at the end of the season, we get together. We like maybe watch them all. Or, you know, like within a week, watch them all. Then meet together at the end of the week and talk about the whole season. Because Especially because there's yeah. no books to base it on. Uh, yeah, we could almost fill an entire episode with all the stuff. Especially if we have a whole season's worth. That could be a very long episode. Let's see, we are getting close on time, and I have really good questions this week. So we're going to play Who Is Your Daddy and What Does He Do? Now we are going to do something extremely fun. We're going to play a wonderful game called Who Is Your Daddy and What Does He Do? Who Is Your Daddy and What Does He Do? It's not a tumor. Here we go. So I came up with some good questions, and actually you're both not going to get the same ones because I actually came up with a few this week. So... I'm going to give the first one to Greg. Greg, would you take a million dollars if once a week one random food item you eat would literally turn into a shit sandwich and you have to eat it? I'm talking shit on bread for the once rest of your life. Once a week. Isn't that like physically impossible? What? To eat like shit multiple times. What do you mean? Why would it be physically impossible? I, I think I remember like a long time ago people saying like you could eat like shit like one to two times but because of like the amount of toxins that's in it it would actually end up like hurting you because well, of listen, all the bile this, and this stuff. Is, this is be... called fun time play time Justin. We don't need science to ruin it. Well let me let me <laughs> let me wrap this up. It's mostly about the shit here. taste. I'm getting a million dollars every year? Or no every one million week? dollars flat out. For Every the rest week? of my life? For the rest of your life. One yeah. shit yeah, sandwich a shit. week. Eh. You wouldn't do it? You couldn't show... And I'm not talking... I'm talking... You could get a variety. You could get your classic shit. You know, shit on rye. You know, then you could have your uh, diarrhea in pita bread. I mean, you could have them all. It could be anything. I'm pretty sure I've had diarrhea in pita before. <laughs> That's for a million bucks. I mean, Panera. it wouldn't be a bad deal. It's a million dollars. I'd invest it. But I'm not trying to eat shit sandwiches every week. I know I wasn't going to ask you, Justin, but would you eat a shit sandwich once a week? And it's a random food. You never know when it's going to hit. 
So I don't, do I get a million dollars every single week, or I just get a million dollars once, one, and then I have to eat? Just one one million dollars. That's a lot of poop to eat for the rest of my life. Bro. That's one shit sandwich a week. I don't know. Think but of all the food you dollars. eat in a week. And it, and wow. listen, and the shit's not even bad for you. It's it's like like the good calories. Uh, I'm eating a really good, good steak. Stuff? It's got seasoning on it, and it's delicious, and it smells good. And then I go. Yeah, to can eat I do that? Can I eat like? Can I eat other food to like mix it in with? Let, only one food item is changing to the shit sandwich. You do have to eat the whole shit sandwich. But yeah, right, if you've got I mean, side like, I could items. Also have it like a side item of like a yeah. baked potato with my shit sandwich, yeah. or tomato soup to dip it in. I mean, but think about it this yeah, way: yeah, like, I'm all for it. Sunday I'll night, eat, if I'll you, eat shit. Just think about it this way: Sunday night. At, you know, like 11, 35, you're like, man, I'm kind of hungry. You make yourself like a bowl of popcorn. You're like, ah, and you take a bite, shit sandwich. Now you're like, well, I got to eat this shit sandwich if I want to keep my million dollars. So, you know, that rolls around. You're like, I'll just eat after midnight. Could be 12.01. You're going to be like, I'm going to have a Pop-Tart. Shit sandwich again because it's a new week. So, Greg, you're not eating the shit sandwiches. Justin, you are? Yeah, yeah, it sounds great. I, I would eat the shit sandwich too. One million dollars, man. I could eat a shit sandwich. It's your own shit, by the way. Look at how far uh, future President Donald Trump has come with just a million dollar investment from his dad. So for if you only had to eat shit for one year, once a week. All right. All right. Here's my here's my second one, uh, Justin. You yeah. can you can stop Hitler before he does his drastic deeds to the world, but in okay. order to do this. You have to is that kill. Because it's Holocaust Remembrance Day. Is that what we're doing this question? Is it really? I'm pretty sure today is. Yeah. No, that, I had no idea, but that works well. Cool. <laughs> but I can stop Hitler. You, in order to kill Hitler and stop his reign, you okay. have to kill Hitler's grandmother. And she's the nicest lady you've ever met in your life. Don't care. Not prejudice. He's, he's... He's he's the biggest piece of shit I've ever heard. But you have of. to spend time <laughs> with her. She's gonna make you some okay. cookies, some lunch. Okay. But then no, you have I'm, but I'm, and then you have I'm, to I'm heart I'm heartless, I'll kill her. Are you gonna are you gonna oh, tell she... her? What? Oh she's like 80 80 ish. Seventy five to eighty. She's a little she's old. She's lived 80. a good life then. Yeah, she's fine. Well you You're how good. are you gonna explain it to her? Or are you just yeah, gonna have just to kill her? Kill her. <laughs> I'm gonna just be like Look, Mrs. Hitler, I really appreciate all the cookies, but I'm going to have to kill you. I hope you understand. <laughs> you did just... Your, but, your but grandson's why? an asshole. <laughs> stab. St oh, stab. You go for the stab. Greg, would, you, would you do it? Whatever. Whatever's handy. Easy, dude. She's old. She's, She's ready old. to go anyway. She's okay, old. what's your... Uh, Justin, you're going with the stab method. Greg, what's your kill method? I didn't, yeah. I didn't really. Whatever's handy is what I really meant. Like if <laughs> whatever I can find first. Just, I'm just going through yeah. that house hitting her with everything. Whatever works. Uh, <laughs> I'm probably just gonna choke her out. Just think of how many Jews we would save. How many awesome Six comedies we plus. would have that we don't have because of the Holocaust. Can we? Can we say that's that's racist? Because of Jews? Because you said like we'd have more comedy because Jews are funny. They're really funny. I don't think that that's prejudice. <laughs> is that is that is that it, or is it that? Th oh, I'm not even gonna say that because it, it would come off way bad. But I mean, I guess. Sorry, Jews. I think you're all funny. I mean, I, mean, I don't is know. Is that a bad thing? That, you know, what I mean, do you are there like super serious Jews? That do you think that? Do like you think that that Asians time? would be super upset if you're like Jews, the ones that were young? You're like, if we if we wouldn't have bombed Hiroshima, we'd have a lot of like savvy businessmen around yeah is that that's not that'll, that's not prejudice or racist math. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> we would so, already we would already have you know 4k tvs back in the 80s oh my god i don't think the world would have lasted with the technology we have in the 80s we would have done dumb shit with it like i bet we could ask to wash these jeans right. better somehow uh okay i have another million dollar question I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all the racist remarks. I really do love. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we know racist. you were being sincere. I love you, Greg. <laughs> Greg, black Jewish. Would you take a million dollars, but a... for the rest of your life, once a year, a game that you're playing 
you get up to the end and then you can never finish it. You'll never be able to finish it and you can't ever know what happens at the end. One time a year, random game. Now you've got the you've got the run that if you play enough games, it could be a game you don't give a fuck about the end. I didn't hear the end part of that question. Okay. Once a year for the rest of your life, one game that you're playing currently, you'll get up to the end of the game, but you will never get the conclusion. You'll never finish it. You'll never know the end. Give me the money. Yeah. <laughs> Way better than eating shit sandwiches. <laughs> Justin? I'd play enough games in a year that I think I'd be okay with I would. That. I wouldn't do it. I would not do it. I have that personality. Like, I have to know what fucking, how it ends. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, we already see enough shit that's, like, has cliffhangers and stuff like that that we have to deal with all the time anyway, so. Yeah, but you you eventually get some, some you know, relief. Not necessarily. I mean, there's TV shows that ended with a big cliff. Think of that, the end Sopranos? of season four of Heroes. I got yeah, a million or, or bucks. Sopranos. I'm going to make my own ending. There was no cliffhanger. I'll just make my own ending with the fun I'm going to have with the money. Well, I mean, I guess you got that because it could be a Everybody game you don't want to see. Everybody already going to know the ending, though, because they get to know it. But, yeah, they can't, they can't tell you. They, you will never know. You, there's no way for you to find out. There's no you, – you can't find it on YouTube. That'd be cool because we would just play around like you would tell me and I would be like, see, I didn't – It would just be like, wah, 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 yeah. wah. <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah, that ending. Totally understand. <laughs> I would take a polygraph. They'd be like, he really doesn't know. It's crazy. <laughs> All right. I have one more question, I think. Okay. I got to piss. This is, a, this, is a, this is an either or. So we were talking about Game of Thrones. Or Greg. It's going to be everybody because it's a short one. But okay. this is you get you have to choose one or the other. You will never know the end of of Game of Thrones. You'll never know what happens to all those characters. Basically, you'll stop now. Or, okay. you'll never be able to walk again. <laughs> Game of no Thrones. million bucks? No million bucks. This is just either or. You have to choose. I mean, Game of Thrones, I like my legs and walking. <laughs> yeah. So, you're going with the legs? No, I'm, I, I would like to keep my legs and not know Game of Thrones. No, 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 you, no I'm sorry, you misunderstood. Question. The two options are, what, either you're never going to know the end of Game of Thrones, okay. or you're never going to be able to walk. Right, I want to never know the end of Game of Thrones okay. because I would I thought like to be able to walk. <laughs> Will I be able to get robot legs? Greg, you have to... Yes, but they're always going to be faulty. Like, they're going to kick out like you're, you know, like like when you run and you kick your legs out to the side. That's how you're going to have to walk with your robot legs. But, but a wheelchair will be fine. It'll just be normal. I'm going with the end of Game of Thrones just for the same fact that I have to know the end of the stuff. I don't know. It's like that. I don't, I'm just a weird guy, I guess. Well, that's okay. Me and Justin both opted out. So, so I you can it. tell us and we'll carry you around. There you go. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks. I appreciate it. Well, me and Greg will combine be your one hoe door. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which one's going to be the hoe and which one's going to be the door? I got I'll the door. The yeah, <laughs> nice. You, you guys are on the same page. <laughs> All right. Anything you guys have to say before we end the podcast? I think I'm good. Good. Uh, I Vote for Trump. Type. Oh, wait. Uh, <laughs> did, we didn't talk about Power Rangers. Power Rangers have boobs now. I saw uh, that. Big ones. Kind of hot. Uh, and, they look, and they look like Transformers. Well, they also uh, look like uh, Tony Stark. They look like fucking Iron Man. Yeah. And then... Uh, As they well, should. The other thing that I said. Uh, oh, yeah. The new Nintendo NX might use cartridges again. I doubt that's true. I doubt it, too. But just the thought of it would be kind of cool. I, I'd be all right with it. Uh, I think we hit every topic except for those last two. And Greg has to pee, just like last week. He was trying to run off to pee. I feel like we should make him stay for a lot longer. It's, yeah, either it's... that or get a bedpan whenever. <laughs> I have two That's it. St well, then it's just like put in your up. catheter. I liked uh, the new format with the pictures. It makes it look pretty. And hopefully we'll yeah. start getting some more involvement from people we, we had somebody drop by for five seconds and realize we're not funny or entertaining but uh 
Uh, can I do the ending theme song this week? Do you want to do the ending theme song? Yeah. Okay, well... So after we say our goodbyes, I'll, I'll do it. Okay, so... Goodbye. Have a good night. See you guys. Love you. This has been a production of Keith Crabback. This podcast is not brought to you by Audible.com. <laughs> All right, everybody. Have a wonderful evening. That's why you're dancing, damn it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, that's enough. Everybody have a good night. Bye. Take it easy. Bye-bye.